Dragon Table, I will be going over a tutorial on how to play Puerto Rico. Uh, it is a classic Euro game. Uh, it is all about resource management, collecting victory points, uh, building buildings, growing crops, shipping your goods. Um, very Euro. There is pretty much uh, almost no luck involved in the game. Uh, the only luck comes in which plantations are available to, to pick each round. Um, and, and maybe depending on what your opponents choose uh, as to what is left for you to choose from, but for the most part it's pretty much a straight strategy game. It makes it a little bit difficult for new people to get into it because they can get left behind kind of quick, but hopefully this video will help you out. Let's take a look. This is Puerto Rico set up for a four player game. It's a different setup for every number of players that you have, and you can play two to five players. There are special rules for two player that are even more different than the rules for three, four, and five players. Um, so we're just gonna address uh, how you set it up for a four player game. And I might mention occasionally the differences between the different players, but you can easily refer to it in the very beginning of the rule book. In a four player game, everyone starts with three doubloons or money. Coins. How about we call them coins because I can pronounce that. Um, you choose who goes first randomly. Uh, there are no dice in the game, but you could, of course, borrow a die from one of your other games because certainly if you have this game, you have other games. Um, and Or you can fight it out. I don't care. Just decide who goes first. Um, I get to go first because my imaginary friends couldn't put up with my fisticuffs. So I get the governor placard, and it says on the governor placard starts a round. So I get that for this round. And it means that I start with an indigo plantation on my island. And I can, I can put it on any of my little spaces right up at the top. I'm just choosing to put it up in that corner. Uh, the second player also gets an indigo plantation, and the third and fourth players get corn. And that's how you start the game for four players. It's slightly different for three players, slightly different for five players. Um, you also have a, in a four player game, you have a base of 100 victory points. And these are in denominations of one and five, but it's a total of 100 points. Um, and uh, I also have a supply of 75 colonists, four of which I have placed on the colonist ship. And that's also for a four player game. I have uh, randomized all of the plantation tiles uh, and then flipped them over, placed them face down. Uh, the quarry tiles have their own stack right there, and they're face up. And then I have the first uh, row of plantation tiles out. These were the ones that were randomly flipped off the top of the piles. And this is uh, in the first round, if someone chooses the settler as the action, these are the plantations we would be choosing from. There are a bunch of uh, buildings, obviously. There are four each of the small um, production buildings. There are three each of the larger production buildings. And there are two each of all the other buildings, except for the large buildings, uh, of which there is one each. And these are the ones that are end game scoring buildings here on the right side of the board. Um, we have the trading house here, which is where you can sell your goods for money. Um, if you sell your goods for money, you don't get to ship them for points, but you do get money, which is important because you need money in order to buy buildings. The red number in the top right corner is the victory points that these are worth at the end of the game, and the little number in the circle is how much it costs to purchase these buildings without any bonuses. There are ways to get uh, some uh, bonuses in the game namely by building quarries. Right here I have three cargo ships. In a four player game you put out the five, six, and seven space cargo ships. Uh, there are different ones that you use depending on how many people are playing. Um, and each ship can only ship one kind of good at a time. So once you start say putting corn on a ship, corn is then the only thing that can go on that ship. And corn cannot go on any of the other ships. It would have to be indigo or sugar or tobacco or coffee. There are five spaces on this ship, six spaces on this one, and seven spaces on this one, obviously. Um, 
Over here on the right side, you have the roles that every player gets to choose during the round. Um, when you choose this role, you get a benefit if you're the one who chooses it, and then everyone else gets to take an action if you've chosen that one. The only one that uh, the other players don't get to take an action is if you choose Prospector. That just gives you one doubloon from the bank, um, and it doesn't give anything to anyone else. So let's talk about the different roles that you can take when you're playing the game. So what will happen is the first player obviously gets to go first and then play will go in clockwise order. Um, when the round is over, when everyone's completed, uh, ch everyone has chosen um, a role and everyone's taken their actions, then the governor placard passes to the person on the left. And then that person gets to start a round. Uh, during the round you choose a role. If you choose the settler, you may choose either a quarry or a plantation tile. Um, and then everyone else gets to choose a plantation tile. Um, the other people may not choose a quarry unless they have a construction hut built with a person manning it. Um, if you choose the trader, it means you get to sell your goods. And if you're the one who uh, chooses, you get to sell, choose what goods you're going to sell first and you get one extra doubloon for, your, for selling your good. Normally corn is worth zero, that if you choose the trader though, you would get one extra doubloon for selling corn and you would get one doubloon. Um, indigo is worth one, sugar is worth two, cough, uh, tobacco is worth three, and coffee is worth four. And it says that on the trading house tile. You can only sell to the trading house different types of goods unless you have an office on your island. If you have an office, then you can sell something that's already there. So let's say we've got a corn, a, uh, a sugar, and a tobacco in the trading house. And let's say you want to sell tobacco, then um, you would not be able to unless you had an office. If you have an office, then you could sell tobacco. Otherwise, you would have to sell something different. And once the trading house is full, let's say the last person buys, sells a, uh, an indigo, then the trading phase is over. The, uh, the trading house gets emptied and no one else can sell that round. So you can't just restart. Like if, if I chose it and I sold a good and then he sold a good and that filled up the trading house, it would then empty these next people would not get to, to trade uh, because that's just part of the mechanic of the game and part of your strategy. Um, uh, if you choose the craftsman, then you get to produce goods. If you're the one who chooses it, you get to choose an extra good that you would have already produced. If you would not have already produced anything, then you do not get the extra good. Duh. Um, in order to produce a good, um, you need to have a colonist present on the correct plantation. Now, if you have a colonist on the corn plantation, for instance, you will automatically get a corn if you choose production, or if someone else chooses production, you'll get a corn, and you get to keep that, and you can either sell it or ship it. Um, but corn is the only uh, good that you can produce without a building. The other goods that you have need a building. For instance, these two players start with indigo, in order to produce indigo, you need to have an indigo plant, either a small indigo plant where you can have one worker or a large indigo plant where you can have three workers. That's the same for sugar, uh, it's the same for tobacco, and the same for coffee. You have to have both the plantation with a worker on it and you have to have a building with a worker on it. Uh, for the mayor, you get new colonists coming off the ship. The bonus, if you choose the mayor, uh, role is that you get to get one bonus colonist first from the supply and your bonus colonist will go here and then you start and you uh, you take the first one and then the next player takes the next one and so on and so forth until the ship is empty and then you replenish the supply with the number of empty uh, spaces on buildings that sounds a little confusing what i'll have to do is probably play a little bit into the game um, and then show you what it looks like a little farther into the game as to how to, how to replenish the colonist boat, because that can get a little confusing. Especially since we don't have any buildings out right now. 
Speaking of which, the other role you can choose is the builder. And if you are the builder, um, if you choose the role, it will cost you one less doubloon to buy one of these buildings, which means for, in essence, the buildings that cost one, which are the small indigo plant and the small market, would be free for you. Um, and everything else would be one less. And then everyone else can also buy buildings. You don't have to purchase a building, um, but in the beginning of the game, you're most likely going to because you're probably going to need uh, buildings in order to either produce your goods or store your goods, perhaps, or maybe even sell your goods. If you choose the captain role, then you get to start by placing goods on the ships. Um, a, you could start out by saying, I'm gonna place you know, two corn on here and then Whoever is next would get a chance either to place corn on the ship or different goods on these other ships. Um, there's also some buildings that can help you with shipping as well, like the wharf, which gives you your own ship. Very handy. Uh, so no one can block you out. Um, if you are the captain, if, you, if that's the role you've chosen, then you're going to get an extra victory point for shipping. And if uh, someone chooses the captain role you, and you have goods uh, on your player board, you must ship them. You don't have the option of not shipping them. Because at the end of the captain phase, you can only store one good. So only one, and I don't mean one type of good, just one good. Only one good can be stored unless you have a warehouse or a large warehouse. These boats uh, stay here until they're filled. Once one of the boats is filled, then it gets emptied and placed back new. And then new stuff can go on it. For each good that a player loads on a ship, he gets one victory point. Doesn't matter what type of good it is. Um, you do not get more victory points for the higher value items. You get more coins if you sell the higher value items, but you get the same amount of victory points for shipping them. So that's something to think about in your strategy. It's often you think about selling things like tobacco and coffee and shipping things like corn and indigo because they're not worth as much money to sell. Um, but you also don't want to lose uh, any of your items um, to waste at the end of the captain phase since you can only store one. And the last one you can choose I already mentioned is the prospector. All that does is it gives you one doubloon from the bank. Now at the end of the round, whatever roles haven't been chosen, because each player is going to choose one, and since there are a total of seven, three roles will not be chosen at the end of the round. Each one of those roles will get one doubloon placed on it, and whoever chooses that role next will get the money that's on it, and that will continue throughout the game. So it's possible that one of the roles might get more than one doubloon on it. Sometimes the prospector can get a couple of doubloons on it, and then it's worth taking it. Even though you don't get any other benefit from it, maybe you just really need, to need the money. So I mentioned that buildings have victory points on them. Those are victory points that you score at the end of the game. All of these buildings will score at the end of the game, whether you have a colonist on them or not. These are different. At the end of the game, in order for these to score, um, and they are end game scoring pieces, they need to have a colonist on them. The only phase that you can, you, you can move colonists around is during the mayor phase, and that's when you get new colonists. It's essentially, you can consider it like a clean slate, where you can take all of your colonists off and then put them all back on your buildings in any configuration that you want, but you can only do that during the mayor phase. The game ends when either you um, run out of colonists to uh, fill up the ship, and then the round will finish, and then scoring will happen. Um, if you run out of victory points for shipping, because that's what these are, these are going to be victory points for shipping, since these score after that's all done. So let's try and show a little bit about how this game plays. Um, there are, the actions for each of the roles is explained on, on everyone's board, and the privilege that you get for choosing that role is also explained right there on the board, which is nice. Um, the Buildings all explain on them what they are, uh, except for the production buildings, which obviously are just for producing goods. Um, if you need more detail about the buildings, it is listed in the rulebook. So, uh, if I was the governor, I would be going first. And there's kind of two ways of thinking to go about this. If you choose the uh, builder role 
first, I would be able to get an indigo plant out, which would be nice because I have indigo, I'm going to need an indigo plant. However, um, if I choose the builder phase, someone else is going to choose the mayor. And that means that they're going to get two colonists and I'm only going to get one colonist to start with. Um, so I might want to choose uh, the mayor role just so I have a, an extra colonist to fill my indigo plant, but it'll have to wait until the next mayor phase comes around anyways, because you can only place colonists during the mayor phase. Even if you've got extra ones that are just hanging out on your board, if it's not the mayor phase, you can't place them on the building. So for instance, you can't build a building and then place a colonist on it unless you have um, the, I believe the university. Yeah. Um, the university lets you uh, put a colonist on a building that you build, but it's a pretty high value building and it's something that you get later in the game usually. I think I'm going to choose building because then at least it'll cost me one less to build. So I'll place this next to me. And, and if whatever I choose to build is going to cost one less. Now I have an indigo. I could buy an indigo, a small indigo plant for free. Or I could buy a large indigo plant for two. And then if I got more indigo plantations, I think I'll do that just because I can get it cheaper. So I'm going to pay two and buy a large indigo plant. Now I get to place this on my board at the bottom. One of the things to think about is that these buildings, and I'll demonstrate here, take up two spaces. So when you're thinking about building, you want to make sure that you leave room somewhere to place these buildings at the end of the game, because these are going to be more end game buildings. If you fill up your, your area and only leave single spots open, you're not going to have a spot to place a, a large building. And you cannot move your buildings around once they've been placed. Kind of like real life. So I chose the large indigo plant. I don't have any you know, workers, obviously. I wouldn't be able to put the workers on them on anyways. Uh, so now the person to my left takes a turn and he's going to go for just the single indigo plant for one because he does not get the bonus that I got because I was the, uh, the builder. Um, and then our friend over here, he already has corn. Uh, so what he's going to do is he is going to choose the small market for one. And the, mar the small market is going to give him plus one when he sells to the trading house. So he's kind of thinking ahead that he's gonna have some corn to sell and maybe he'll be able to get a bonus on it. Um, and our friend over here is gonna do something a little different. He knows he's going last. Um, he's gonna spend two to buy the construction hut. And once he gets a colonist on that, once that'll let him, what, what that will let him do is uh, choose a quarry during the settler phase instead of a plantation if he wanted to. And if you have a quarry on your island, uh, you get to reduce the cost of any of the buildings by one. Uh, now at the top of this, uh, this board, this column has is, is got one, a one quarry symbol, this has a two quarry symbol, this has a three quarry symbol, and this has a four quarry symbol. What that means is that's the maximum you can reduce the cost of those buildings by. So these can be reduced by no more than one. These can be reduced by no more than two. These can be reduced by no more than three. And these can be reduced by no more than four. So something to keep in mind, there's no point in ever buying more than four quarries. So everyone has built and now um, it is this player's turn. And he is going to do the smart thing, which is take the mayor. And the reason this is smart for him to do is because it's going to allow him to place two colonists, whereas everyone else is going to place one. His benefit for taking the mayor uh, role is that he gets one co bonus colonist from the supply first, which is going to place on his indigo plantation. And then we start to dole out colonists from the ship. So the first one goes to the mayor and he's going to put that on his plant, his, um, his indigo plant. So now, if someone chooses production, he's actually going to be able to produce indigo. 
so this player is going to get a colonist, which um, he's going to choose to place on his corn. Uh, this guy is going to do the same thing because producing goods is important. And I am going to get a colonist as well, and I'll place it on my indigo, but if we get production during this turn, I'm not going to get anything from it because I don't have anybody on my indigo plant. That's how, how the game works. So after the mayor phase, uh, we now need to replenish the boat of colonists. And you always do at least as the number of people that are in the game. So it's a minimum of four colonists are going to go on the ship. Um, but it's a maximum of the number of open spaces on uh, boards in buildings. You don't include plantation openings, but buildings. So this has three openings. That is not open. That's four. And that's five. So we actually are going to get five colonists placed on the ship. So now this guy is up. And if he chose the craftsman role, that's where goods get produced. He would get a corn, and he would get a corn, and he would get an indigo, and I would get nothing. Um, and it is something to keep in mind when you're choosing your role, is not just how much it will benefit you, but how much it may benefit or hurt other people. Now at this point, in this round, there's no possible way for me to um, produce any goods, because there's no way for me to get any more colonists um, even if I get a, a settler and get magically a corn plantation, I still wouldn't be able to produce any goods this turn. So I think what he's going to do is take the craftsman role, because it's going to give him one more good than everyone else. Move some of these colonists. So he's going to take the craftsman role. Now, you do that last, so everyone gets a chance to get their good first, or their goods. So he gets a corn, he gets a corn, I get nothing and he gets an indigo. And then as his bonus, he gets to choose one extra good uh, that, he would have, that he already produced, and he's gonna choose a corn, because that's the only thing he can choose. And now it is uh, our friend over here's turn. And I, I think that he's thinking about expanding his plantation, so he's gonna go settler now. He chose the settler token. That means that he can choose either a plantation or a quarry. And he's the only one of those that can do that. He's also the one that built the construction hut, but he doesn't have a colonist on it. Um, it wouldn't matter in this case anyway, since he chose the settler token or settler role. If I had chosen the settler role, then he wouldn't be able to choose a quarry until he has a colonist on the construction hut. But he chose it. Um, but I think that he wants to expand, um, and he's, he's looking at the, uh, the, the high, high dollar stuff, so he's thinking either coffee or tobacco, um, and I think he's going to choose a coffee. He's, he's going all, all in to try and produce some high value goods. We'll see if it works out for him. So he chooses the coffee, so now I get to choose one, and I'm going to choose the indigo because I already have an indigo, a large indigo plant which means I can support up to three indigo plantations, so I might as well take another indigo. Um, this guy is going to also choose uh, coffee, so he's going high dollar as well, which leaves either tobacco or tobacco for our friend over here, and guess what? He's going to choose tobacco. Um, and so now that's the end of that settler phase. This tile gets placed over here. If we need it at the end of the game, we can put it back in and mix it around and use it, but um, generally we don't need those. So now I'm going to flip over five new ones. There's corn, there's sugar, there's indigo, there's tobacco, and there's another sugar. So the next time the settler phase comes up, these are going to be our choices. So it's the end of the round because we've all chosen our roles. So now before we put our roll cards back, we're going to put money on the ones that weren't used. So the trader wasn't used, the captain wasn't used, and the prospector wasn't used. So now we're going to put all of these back.
and the governor placard will move to the person to the left. And now he'll be first this time. So now the next round would start and with uh, our new governor choosing a role first. So as you go through the game, you have to balance being able to produce goods, with being able to sell goods, um, and being able to ship goods. So that's where your resource management comes into play. We can do another example round. So let's say he's thinking, this guy's thinking, well, if I choose the trader token, I'm going to get to, to I would, I'm not going to be able to ship my indigo, but I would be able to sell my indigo. Um, and I would get not only one extra doubloon as the person who chose the trader, but I would also get the doubloon that's sitting on this token right now. So that's what he's going to do. He's going to choose trader. He gets the doubloon that was sitting on top of that token. And now he's going to sell his indigo. And he's going to sell his indigo for two. Normally indigo sells for one, but because he chose the trader option, he could sell. Now, he's put all of the rest of us in a spot where we can't do anything because corn is worth zero. Um, he has a small market, but he doesn't have anyone manate yet, so he doesn't have the benefit. If he sold a corn, he would not get anything from it yet. Uh, and I don't have any goods to sell. So that was a move on his part to get a bunch of money and leave the rest of us with nothing. Thanks a lot, guy to my left. Uh, so now it is uh, this guy's turn. He has a tobacco plantation. In order to start producing tobacco, he would need to get tobacco storage, which costs five. He has two doubloons, so he's not going to be able to do that yet. He's going to choose the captain. That's going to give him one extra doubloon, and it's going to give him one extra victory point. Now, remember, shipping goods is not optional. If you can, you have to. So he has two corn, and he's going to put the corn on the smallest ship. Gives him, that gives him three points, because he gets a point each for each corn, plus one victory point extra for choosing the captain role. So he gets those, and you can place those face down so no one sees what you have, because the backs are all the same. Now this guy has corn, so he must ship it, and it has to go in this boat. It cannot go in any other boat. And he gets one victory point for shipping, and he'll put that face down. I have no goods. He has no goods because he sold his indigo, and that's the end of the captain phase. Um, so now, this guy here, he has very little money. So I think what he's going to do is take the prospector because he's going to get the doubloon that's sitting on it and then he will get the doubloon for choosing prospector and nobody else gets anything from that. So now it's my turn and I am definitely going mayor. Um, I pretty much have, like, that is, that is the only choice, really, for me, um, is to choose the mayor token. Uh, that way I can get some production going on. It's the only way. So I get one bonus colonist from the ship first, which I will put one on my indigo plant. Then I get the first colon, or that first one comes, doesn't come from the ship, it comes from the supply. Then I get the first one off the ship, and I will put him here. And then the next guy will get one. And you have to, if you have an open spot, you have to place a colonist on it. If you don't have an open spot, you can place it off to the side. Um, he's going to get a colonist and he'll put it on his market because he doesn't have a tobacco plant yet. So there's no reason to put it on his tobacco plantation. Then he will get a colonist and he will put it on his construction hut because um, he doesn't have a coffee roaster. So there's no reason to put a guy on this coffee plantation yet. And I'm going to get one more guy. Uh, because of the number of extra spaces that we had on the building when we replenished the ship during the first round. So uh, if we have a production phase, I'll actually get to produce two indigo, which is very exciting. So now I, we have to refill the colonist ship. Remember, it's a minimum of four because that's the number of players, um, a maximum of the number of empty spaces. And the only empty space now um, on a building is here. That's one. So we're going to put four colonists on the ship. Ta-da! And that's the end of the second round. 
So hopefully you can start to see how this works um, and the type of decisions that you need to make in order to maximize your options at, at any given time. Um, let's zoom in on the board and I'll explain a little bit more about what each of these buildings does. Okay, so here are the buildings that you get to choose from. The top row, the top two rows are all production buildings. This is a small indigo plant that can produce one indigo if you have an indigo plantation. The large indigo plant can produce three. Um, same thing with the small sugar mill and the large sugar mill. Uh, tobacco storage can have three workers on it and a coffee roaster can have two workers on it so it can support two coffee plantations. Now down below that we have the beige buildings which all do something. If you give it, have a small market then when you sell your goods to the trading house, you get an extra doubloon. The, if, with the, if you have a hacienda during the settler phase, you get uh, one extra plantation. If you have a construction hut during the settler phase, you may choose a quarry instead of a plantation. If you have a small warehouse, then you can store one kind of good. So not just one good, this is one good, this is one kind of good. So um, it gives you a lot more options uh, at, the, at the end of the captain phase. If you're producing a lot of different types of goods, it's very smart to get at least a small warehouse, um, hopefully a large warehouse, so that you don't lose your goods during the captain phase if the boats have been filled up with types of goods that you don't have. If you have a hospice during the settler phase, you can put a colonist from the supply on your plantation that you've just placed. If you have the office, you can sell the same type of good to the trading house that already exists there. Normally, if there's already indigo in the trading house, you can't sell indigo there. If you have an office, you can sell indigo. If you have a large market, then you get plus two doubloons every time that you sell goods to the trading house. If you have a large warehouse, you get to store two types of goods. Again, types of goods, multiple, it doesn't matter how many, but it's a type of good. As opposed to at the end of the captain phase where you can store one good only. If you have a factory, then during the craftsman phase, um, you get to make money based on how many different types of goods you're producing. Um, if you produce one type of good, you don't get any benefit. If you produce two different types of goods, you get an extra doubloon, or you get a, you get a doubloon. Normally you don't get money at all during crafting phase, you just get goods. Um, the factory lets you get money uh, for the number of different types of goods you're producing. If you have a university, then when you build a building, which is one of any one of these buildings, um, including these, you get to put a colonist on it from the supply. If you have a harbor, then you get plus one victory point for every shipment. That means every single good that you ship where you normally get one victory point, you would get two. Very nice. Very highly recommend this building. If you have a wharf, uh, then it basically gives you your own ship. So it's, these are great and it keeps, helps keep you from being blocked out of the other ships. If you're producing, especially if you're producing a type of good that no one else is really producing, um, then you might get blocked out of the ships. And, uh, you know, if the ships get filled up with corn, indigo, and uh, coffee, and you're producing tobacco, then having a, a wharf would let you ship your tobacco anyways. Now, all of these on the side are end game scoring. And they, like I say, they only count at the end of the game um, if you have a guy on them. You will get the four points regardless, that's up on the top right corner, but you won't get the benefit of the building itself unless you have it manned by a guy at the end of the game. If you have the guild hall at the end of the game, you get plus one or plus two victory points for each small or large production building you have, which is these. So you would get plus one for a small sugar mill or a small indigo plant. You would get plus two victory points for any one of these four buildings. If you have the residence, then you get bonus points for having your uh, plantation and quarry areas more filled. Um, if you've got 9 to 12 spaces, then you would get a uh, different amount of victory points for that. If you have the fortress, then you get to score victory points for uh, every three colonists, which is really nice if you happen to have a lot of colonists. 
Um, the custom house gives you bonus uh, victory points for every shipping victory point that you already have. And this only counts for the chips, not for the scoring of the tiles. So you wouldn't score your tiles and then add to it from this. It counts for the victory point, the actual physical chips that you get. If you have the city hall, then you get victory points for every beige building that you have in your city, whether it's occupied or not. And the city hall counts as long as it's occupied. So hopefully this all makes some kind of sense. Um, this game does help uh, if you play it, you're going to understand it a little bit better. Um, if you're the new player playing with, say, three other experienced players, it's going to be harder to keep up just because you're not going to know the strategy. And as you can see, it really doesn't have to do with luck. It is a strategy game for sure. Um, but what will happen from here on out on the game is we'll keep going around and keep choosing different roles every time. Um, any roles that don't get chosen will get a doubloon placed on them. Um, once this boat gets full of corn, then it'll get emptied uh, and it'll become open for any other good uh, once someone chooses the captain and chooses to ship a good of a type. And um, uh, all the other things that can happen may depend on the particular buildings that people have chosen to place on their island. And at the end of the game, whoever has the most victory points wins. And like I say, the end of the game happens when either you run out of colonists to refill the ship from your base supply, um, you finish the current round that you're in, and then, um, and then you count up your points. Uh, when the last, uh, the game can also end when the last victory point ship is taken um, from that, and, and these are the ones that you get from shipping. If someone else scores victory points after that from shipping during that, because you're completing that round, um, they, they say to, to keep track on pen and paper if somebody else scores additional points. I say it, you, you, you probably will have some extra ones on a bag you could pull out, because um, it probably won't be a large number, um, but enough that you could keep track. Uh, the game will also end if someone fills in their 12th island space. So if they fill up their entire section, um, not the plantation section, but the building section, if someone during the builder phase puts one last building down and it fills out their island, then that at the end of the round, you score. If there's a tie at the end of the game, then it's settled by whoever has the most doubloons and goods counted together. So doubloons and goods at the end of the game are only counted as a tiebreaker. They don't give you any extra victory points. And that's how you play Puerto Rico. Uh, it is fun, but it, it can be frustrating um, the first time you play it, just because, um, especially if you're playing with people who play it a lot, it's gonna seem like they know exactly what they're supposed to be doing, because they do. Um, so if you get this game, or you can get your hands on this game and kind of fiddle with it a little bit first, uh, it'll give you a better understanding of the type of decisions you might need to make in order to stand a better chance. Although I have to say, the very, very first time I played this, um, I played with people who had played before, and I won the game. So it is possible to, to figure it out. Um, it is not unheard of. But generally speaking, uh, if you're new to gaming in general, uh, this one is a little bit tougher to keep up with experienced players just because there's so much strategy and uh, really very little luck involved. But I hope you have fun playing Puerto Rico, growing crops, selling them, uh, shipping them, and getting victory points. Thanks for visiting the Dragon Table. I'll see you next time.